other families, we serve others, and we pursue excellence. Amen. Bienvenidos a la iglesia, el nuevo comienzo. We also want to welcome all our MVC family, all visitors, and all of you that are joining us by audio and video. Amen. Bienvenidos a todos los que nos escuchan por audio y video. Prepárese a recibir lo que el Señor tenga para usted. Amen. So, praise God. I just wanted to share with you before our speaker comes. We have a special speaker today, Reverend Ma, uh, Ryan Cavanas, and he's going to come. Also, I wanted to say before he comes, congratulations. He just completed a retired after 15 years with EMS. And we want to say thank you for your service. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I have a scripture break before he comes, and it goes like this. Count your blessings. Amen. It says, sometimes we get so busy adding up and counting our cares, our worries, our fears, sickness, troubles, and you can add on to this list. But we're always magnifying the problems before we magnify our God. Amen. <laughs> Let's remember to not forget to magnify, to count our blessings, excuse me, <laughs> to count our blessings yeah. and not just the negative things, amen, but add, count your blessings, amen, let me read it the way I've got it here, it says, sometimes we get so busy adding up and counting our cares, our worries, our fears, sickness, troubles, and we forget to count our blessings, mm -hmm. he wants us to count our blessings, amen, don't pass it up, amen, amen. he wants to bless you, so, you're special. See yourself the way he sees you. Amen. He sees you are special. So see yourself that way. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's uh, make this uh, declaration together. Grab your sword, soldier of God, and uh, let's uh, make this declaration together. Amen. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. Today, I'll be found of the Word of God. I boldly confess my mind is alert. My spirit is receptive, and I'll never be the same in Jesus' name. Ooh, hallelujah. I am blessed. I am blessed. So, you know, as Ryan works his way up here, yes. come on up, brother. And we are ready to hear whatever message God has given you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Amen. And congratulations on your 15 years. Well, 37 years total, 15 years here at Martha. Okay, oh, thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Go ahead, share. Share with him. It's been a quite an experience working the test of this, you know, in people's lives you see you have in your hands sometimes and it's quite a a ministry to take care of people and to when you ever see them at their best, you always see them at their worst, it seems like. So, you know, this is something I feel God put in my heart. I could have done it for this long. If I'd have been in a busy city, it might have been different, but out here it's, it's a lot different than it is in Dallas or Houston or someplace. But, you know, I didn't even know EMS existed until I took a, when I found the first aid class and it wound up being something entirely different. I loved it. And so when you're in God's will, you'll know it. So anyway, so um, I have a little thing for the men here today. It's, a, it's called a life hack. Do you know how to turn a sofa into a sofa bed? <laughs> Just tell your wife, calm down. It works every time. <laughs> so the title of our message today is God's Grace, New Beginnings. Oh boy. Next month, our church will celebrate 12 years and I probably won't be here very much yet. I'll be a part of it maybe, but this is something God has been dealing with me for days and days and days, mostly at nighttime. I, he keeps me awake with all this stuff going over my head and I try and write it down, but it's something that I think all of us have issues with. And pastors touched on it today with his um, scripture break. Sometimes we have trials, tribulations, heartache, burdens, and things, and everybody's is different. So, I'd like you to turn with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 11, verse 28 and 30. It should be a very familiar passage of scripture. I'll give you a couple of seconds to get there. If you'll forgive me, my throat's kind of dry. 
<clears throat> Easy read version says, Come to me, all of you who are tired of the heavy burden, who have been forced to you have been forced to carry. I will give you rest. Accept my teaching, learn from me. I am gentle and humble in spirit, and you will be able to get some rest. Yes, the teaching that I ask you to accept is easy. The load I give you to carry is light. The Amplified Version says, Come to me, all you who are weary and heavily burdened by religious rituals that provide no peace. I will give you rest, refresh, refreshing your souls with salvation. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Follow me as my disciple. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest, renewal, blessed, quiet for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and my burden is light. And the one we most of us know is the King James. Come unto me, all you labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. And you shall find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The last couple of Wednesdays, our Bible study has just walked all over my message, so I didn't want to say anything. But when you think about trials and tribulations and heartache and burdens and things, what's the one person you think of in the Bible? Job. So, when you think about all the things that he endured, I see people, you know, when I was trying to sleep, I could see people, I couldn't see their faces, but they're crying, they're, they're mourning because of a lost loved one or because of an illness or loss of a job or fixing to lose their homes. All, everybody's situation is different. Yes, it is. And I am so blessed when I was on the ambulance. I, if you look around, you can always find someone who's worse off than you are. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, somebody asks you, how you doing? You start telling them, well, you think that's bad. You ought to hear what I've got. Yeah. You know, you try to compare sicknesses or illnesses or diseases. You know, you'll try and top each other. Uh, that's not yeah. what God has for us. Yeah. So, when you turn to Job chapter 1, there's a man in the land of us whose name was Job. That man is perfect and upright. The one that feared God and skewed evil. There was born to him seven sons and three daughters. Oof, I can't imagine that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, his substance also was 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen and 500 she asses, a very great household, so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the East. Of course, he had all these servants and things with him who had to take care of all these things. He didn't take care of all the animals. He had a service to him that. So then we find in verse 9, the Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for naught? Hast not thou made a hedge about him? And I was so thankful for a hedge of protection around us when God puts that there. And about his house and about all that he hath on every side, thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. Mm. So sometimes we have demon possession, mm. and we have demon oppression. We find that Job is going to experience a lot of satanic oppression, not possession. Mm. So in verse 17, Verse 12 and 16, we find that the Sabaeans took all his oxen and his donkeys, fire from heaven, lightning came, and destroyed all of their sheep and servants. Mm -hmm. Boom, just like that. Mm -hmm. All gone. Mm -hmm. While he was there, the one servant went and told Job that. Another servant came and said, a servant came to Job and told him, a great wind came and destroyed the house your sons were in, and it killed all of your sons. I mean... Can you imagine the heartache this man felt? He just lost all of his, his livestock, mm. pretty much. Now his sons are gone. There's no one to, 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 to follow in his footsteps to carry on his name. Through all of this, Job did not sin or blame God. That's it. Verse 20. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped. 
It said, Naked I came out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all of this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Yeah. But that wasn't enough. Chapter 2, The Lord said unto Satan, Thou hast considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and eschewth evil, and still he holdeth fast his integrity, although thou movest me against him to destroy him with cause. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath will he give for his life. But put forth thine hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. The Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. There are some people who are going through some things right now that they can relate to Job very well. You know, I'm ready to go home. I'm, just, I'm so tired. I want to go home. I'm just tired of this, this sickness, this disease. And I'm so weary. You know, everything I've tried is front falling apart. I've tried so hard. It seems like everything I've done just doesn't work. God's against me, it seems like sometimes I think. But you cannot have a testimony until you've gone through the test. We've each got a testimony that's different than others because we've all gone through different things. So have gone through horrible marriages that broke up, children who have gone astray, maybe in prison, or committed suicide, or died, or different things. You know, there's sicknesses, like I said. And a lot of times, we bring these things on ourselves. You know, if you smoke for 20, 30, 40 years, you shouldn't be surprised you wind up with lung cancer. I mean, if you drink, you know, a pint of whiskey a day or something, you shouldn't be surprised. Eventually, it gets roasted to the liver. You know, if you do drugs for all this time, you shouldn't be surprised that you get HIV or some other diseases that you know, if you share needles and... We bring a lot of things on ourselves. Mm -hmm. But Satan is there tempting us. Mm -hmm. He tries to get us to do these things. It's not God's will. No. Satan comes up to us with a still, small voice and I'm whispering in our ears, it's okay. No one's going to know it. You just mm -hmm. try a little bit. Mm -hmm. and you get you a little bit, a little more, a little more. Next thing you know, it's consumed your life. Mm -hmm. You are a servant to whom you yield your members. Yes. So we have to be very, very careful mm -hmm. of what we do, what we say, where we go. So in an instant, his wealth was gone, his family gone. Then we find out his friends came up. And oh was, boy. Don't you just love these friends? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Job got boils on the top of his head to the soles of his feet. They got so bad he was sitting in ashes, he rent his clothes, and he was sitting with broken uh, pottery, scraping himself, trying to relieve himself of the sores, of the pain. Mm. His friends come and sees him and go, you must have done some horrible sin. <laughs> <laughs> you know? but can you, oh like, Boy, you look horrible. <laughs> Man, I'm glad I'm not you. <laughs> but you know, that's not the kind of friend we need to be. No. When we see your brother or sister who is in, in torment, who is in trial or tribulation, is going through a hard time, we should be there to help them pick up their load. Right. We may not be able to carry it for them, mm -hmm. but we can be there and pray for them and be there for them on, and help man. them do what needs to be done. If you see someone sick, go take them some food. Go clean their house for them. Go do their dishes. Yeah. Go you know, mow their yard. Do something for other people. When you find yourself in that situation, when you're in dire straits, and instead of sitting there going, woe is me like Isaiah did, <clears throat> go do something for somebody else. Yes, sir. When you find yourself in a situation, you look around and find somebody worse off, you go help that person. When you go help them, God will bless that. Yeah. Break the bread. But we sit there and go, Woe is me. No one ever comes to see me. No one ever calls me. No one ever, no one cares. Elijah, one time, 
thought he was the only one left after Elijah had gone and told King Ahab you know it's not going to rain for for years and years there's going to be a great drought God sent him to a cave and the ravens fed him with flesh and bread he you know, drank water out of the brook when that brook dried up God sent him to see a lady a widow lady had a little boy and God had already spoke to her and he, he had, um, Elijah was there and saw her there she was Go fix me something to eat. Give me a loaf of a piece of bread. Because, sir, all I had was enough meal for a loaf of bread, a little bit of water, for me and son to eat, and we're going to die. Because you go make my, my stuff first, then you go do yours. God supplied her needs through all that drought. Yes, sir. But then the little boy dies. Because. What do you do? <laughs> Y'all this here getting my hopes all up till my son dies. Mm. And Elijah took the baby up to the, to the bedroom, lay down him three different times. Mm. And the baby came back to life. Yes, took sir. him downstairs. Yeah. You know, so when the situation seems the darkest, uh -huh. don't give up. Amen. There's always hope. Yeah. Just keep praying, keep believing, keep your hand in the nail scarred hands, yes. and God will see you through. Yes, you have a test, it becomes a testimony. Mm -hmm. But Job also had a wife that says, You know, I am so sick and tired of hearing you <laughs> cry about this all the time. Just curse God and die, be through with it. But I'm so thankful for godly husbands and wives who will support their, their families, support their spouses, that when they're in sickness, when they're in dire straits, they're there for them. They encourage them. They hold their hand. They pray for them. They call for the elders of the church to anoint them and pray for them. But most of all, they hold them in prayer and even having communion with them. You don't have to be in church to have communion. Right. You can have communion at your own home. If you're unable to get out, you can have communion. And if you know someone who's sick, someone who's uh, an invalid, someone who can't get out, go share that with them. That's something that may be just the thing they need to turn things around. We never know. Yes. Yeah. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verses Starting with verse 15. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many rebound to the glory of God. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. For we look not to the things which are seen, the things that are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal. Yeah. The things which are not seen are eternal. Yes. You may be going through some really hard time. You may be going through a divorce, your foreclosure on your house, losing your job, loss of a spouse or children. These are just temporary. God has a greater gift for you, Amen. if not on this earth, when you go to heaven. Yeah. There are so many grandmas, grandpas, and mothers and fathers who have gone to their grave praying for their children, their grandchildren, never seeing it come to fruition, but yet God hears their prayers. Yes. I know my grandparents, my parents prayed for me. My, my grandparents died before I became a Christian. I know they believe. <laughs> There is nothing impossible with God if we only believe. Yes, yes. Amen. We can struggle. We can strive on ourselves. We can try everything we can. We go to all these self-improvement classes. We can take self-help courses and we have a PhD and all these things and how to help our mind. But the one thing that's going to help us mm -hmm. is Jesus. Yes. Amen. There's nothing on this earth that God cannot heal, cannot take care of. Romans chapter 8, verse 18. 
For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Mm -hmm. Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 and 5. An easier to read version. Always be filled with joy in the Lord. I will say it again. Be filled with joy. Yes. When you're having a hard time, when things are going bad, mm. that's the time we need to get in the Word. That's the time we need to get on our knees and pray. That's the time we need to draw closer to God. Yes. When things are going good, quite often we just kind of put God on the mm. back step, back without back. worrying about it. Yeah. Yeah. Pastor said many times, it's like a spare tire. Mm. You know, take him out when you need him. I've heard many people say, God's my co-pilot. Mm -hmm. If God's your co-pilot, you need to change places. <laughs> God needs to be your pilot. <laughs> I, you know, I've heard people say also that me and God have our own thing going. Yeah. You know, he leaves me alone, I oh leave him gosh. alone. Oh my goodness. There is <laughs> nothing that I can mean. I lived that way for years and years and years. Mm. Had no... I, I went to church when I was a kid. When I got on my own, never gave God a second thought. No, okay. And where did it get me? Mm -hmm. Jail a couple of times, mm -hmm. facing going to prison. You know, mm -hmm. I lost my marriage, lost my kids, lost mm -hmm. my home, lost my car. You know, just lost everything. Mm -hmm. When I came back to God, mm -hmm. you know, we got house, got cars, got more kids we can shake a stick at, got grandkids. <laughs> Great grandkids. You know, God, just like Job, has just poured blessings upon us. Mm -hmm. And it's nothing, I'm not nothing special to anybody else. But when you have a need to go to God. Yes. Now one thing, you know, this is gonna step on a lot of toes, I know. It's all right. When you're having when you're having financial troubles, mm. that's not the time to stop tithing. Oh, come on. Now, I don't want to see a show of hands here, <laughs> but <laughs> at home, you can raise your hands. If you are not tithing, raise your hands. <laughs> now, but I, I don't mean like putting a $5 bill in the offering plate or $10 or $20. It give, you know, sometimes you give till it hurts. The first time that I remember really being just coming out to me after I got out of jail for the second time I didn't really have a job I was helping a lady clean her yard and paint some fences and stuff and I had a $10 bill we had a revival I really wasn't working so during the day I go vacuum the carpets and sweep the floors and kind of clean, clean up and everything then the Sunday after revival ended, this lady who kind of adopted me, she stood up and said, I think we need to take a love, offer, a love offering up for Ryan. Mm -hmm. So I went, oh man, this is embarrassing. So anyway, before that, we took the regular offering up and God said, put your money in there. Mm -hmm. Dude, I only got $10. Goes, Give it. Okay. So I put the ten dollars in. I took up the love offering, and I got twenty dollars. Mm -hmm. Now I'm not saying that when you give your tithe, God's going to double it. I'm not saying that. Mm -hmm. But I am saying that if you're having financial troubles and you're not tithing, mm -hmm. the Bible says to test it. See if you won't pour, open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing upon you that you can't contain. So. If you're having financial troubles, time. If you're having marital problems, begin to pray. Hold your spouse up in prayer. Begin to seek God's will for you. If you're having medical problems, physical problems, seek out God's will in your life. Begin to pray. Seek counsel. Seek prayer. Get your pastor involved. Get God involved, most of all. Oh, my goodness. There are so many things. 2 mm. Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the Father who is full of mercy, the God of all comfort, 
He comforts us in every time we have trouble. So that when others have trouble, we can comfort them with the same comfort God gives us. It's hard for me to to talk to somebody and comfort them when they've lost a loved one, like a child or a spouse. I haven't gone through that. But those who have are able to counsel and to, to help someone else. Yeah. Now, talk about going through drugs or alcohol, I can talk to them, talk to them about that. Mm -hmm. You know, God delivered me. I didn't have to go to AA or NA. I didn't have the withdrawals like that. When I asked God to take that stuff from me, instantly he was gone. Mm -hmm. 12 to 15 years of doing drugs, just like that, he was gone. Mm -hmm. I didn't get sick or anything. So mm -hmm. God is able to supply your need no matter what it is, instantly. Yes. Amen. First Peter chapter 5, King James Version. Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time, casting all yes capital all. letters uh -huh. underscore it all your care upon him for he careth for you and as pastor says numerous times cross out you and put your name there mm -hmm. be sober yes. be vigilant yes. because your adversary the devil is a roaring lion mm -hmm. a toothless mm -hmm. i like to put that in there it's my part <laughs> a toothless roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour whom resist and fast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of grace, yes. who, shall, oh, grace. who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that he has suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and yes. settle you. Amen. You may suffer for a while. You know, mm -hmm. Darkness is there. You feel like there's all alone. Have you ever gone through a time in your life when you thought your prayers didn't go above the ceiling? Mm -hmm. You prayed and you prayed and you prayed and you cried and cried. It's almost like when um, Elijah had the servants, the servants of Baal, you know, the prophets of Baal. And they were trying to get their God to answer them with fire. <laughs> you know, they were cutting themselves and all kind of dancing. And Elijah said. Well, maybe he's asleep. <laughs> maybe he's over here doing something else. Maybe he might be on vacation. I'm just kind of paraphrasing this, you know. Maybe he's, you know, maybe get a little louder, wake him up. They were cutting themselves, dancing, and, you know, time was up. So Elijah built the altar with 12 big old stones for the 12 children of Israel. Dug a ditch around the altar, mm. brought in a big old barrel of water, mm. brought in a little cover, the sacrifice, the altar, the trench, everything, filled it full, it was running over. Yeah. The deal was the God that brings down fire from heaven mm -hmm. and consumes the sacrifice, that's the God we will serve. Mm. I'll serve yours if you can do it. You serve mine if you can do it. Mm. Very simply, you know, God used to. Here it is, God. Take care of it. Boom! Lightning came down, consumed the sacrifice, the rocks, yep. the water. Everything was gone. He took it all. <laughs> then he had all 450 of the servants of Baal, prophets of Baal caught up, killed them. Mm. You know, there's a penalty for sin. Oh, yeah. The soul that sinneth is surely going to die. Mm. Now, we don't want to die. No. We, as humans, in America especially, we spend billions and billions of dollars on our health care. Mm -hmm. You know, besides the insurance, all the medications, all the treatments, all the, the going to doctors, every time you get a sniffles or this, we spend <gasps> mega bucks. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, trying to get as handsome and pretty as this is, <laughs> we, we spend lots of money, you know. You know. <laughs> so... We have to, what's, up, what's your priority in life? Is your priority health and beauty and, you know, wealth? Mm -hmm. if you're, if you're, if whatever you put before God is your idol. Mm -hmm. And all idolaters will find their place in hell. Mm -hmm. All the drunkards will find their place in hell. All the, 
adulterers will find themselves in hell. You know, I heard a uh, pastor one time says, when somebody was asking, he said, if I go to your church, can I smoke weed? He goes, sure. No, 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 you don't understand. If I go to church, can I smoke marijuana? He goes, sure. He goes, you're telling me I can go to your church and smoke marijuana? He goes, sure. Be right back. He goes, he wears a great big old doobie, you know, and he comes back and he says, I can smoke this. He goes, yeah. Why? He goes, let me ask you a question. Do you go clean, get cleaned up before you take a shower? God didn't expect us to be perfect before we come to church. That's right. Before we come to Him. This church, I'm going to say this, I wish there was all kinds of sinners in this church. I believe that we would re welcome murderers in this church. Hopefully after they can serve their sentence. <laughs> you know, and any kind of sinful person you can imagine in here because if they don't come here, they may never hear the Word of God. This is the place where we can share their burdens, we can pray for them, we can lift them up in their time of need. Mm -hmm. I wasn't perfect when I came to Jesus. You weren't either. There's none perfect. No, not one righteous. So when you see your brother and sister falling under the burden they're carrying, mm -hmm. help them carry it. Yes. Amen. Easy to read version says, So humble under God's powerful hand that He will lift you up when the right time comes. Mm -hmm. Give all your worries to Him because He cares for you. Mm -hmm. Control yourselves and be careful. The devil is your enemy. Mm -hmm. Not your neighbor, not your spouse, not your kids, not your boss, not your whatever. Mm -hmm. If you're having problems with someone because Satan is working through them. Mm -hmm. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Mm -hmm. it's, you know, right? So it's not them. It's the spirit that's in them. Mm -hmm. Yes, you will suffer for a short time. But after that, God will make everything right. He will make you strong. He will support you and keep you from falling. He is the God who gives all grace. He chose you to share in His glory in Christ. He chose you. Amen. That glory will continue forever. Have I not commanded thee? Be strong. This is for pastor. For pastors. But it's also for everyone else. For pastors, this is for you. Joshua chapter 1 verse 9. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and have a good courage. Be not afraid. Neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee wherever thou goest. Today it seems like no matter what we say, we're offending somebody. Mm. Got my feelings hurt. You can't say that. You make, you're you making fun of me. You're... What would John the Baptist or what would Paul or any other of the apostles say in today's society? Mm. If we condone sin... We are all but sending those people to hell. We must speak up against sin. Yes. I'm not going to tell you what sin is. That's between you and God. The Bible is very clear on what a lot of it is. We all have things in our life that even after we accept Christ as our Savior, after we become a Christian, there are still things in our life that need to be confessed. Every day, I find myself going, man, I messed up. Father, forgive me. Every day. You know, Paul says, the things I want to do, I don't do. Yeah. The things I want to do, I don't do. Oh, wretched man that I am. Paul said, I have to crucify the flesh daily. These read version of Joshua 1 9 says, Remember, I commanded you to be strong and brave. Don't be afraid, because the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Amen. There's nothing that is so important, so heavy on your heart, that God can't take care of. 
when you have a decision to make, don't do rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> don't phone yeah, a friend. Sure. <laughs> don't, you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. Heads, tails. <laughs> no. When you have a decision to make in your life, seek the one who knows the future. Yes, amen. Pam and I are, after I retired, we're now we're fixing to move to the San Angelo area. And the people we're, we're buying the house from, or the RV from, He's sick. You know, he's got diabetes really bad. He can hardly see. And so it's kind of postponing things. And, you know, we could say, well, I guess that wasn't meant to be. But we have to have faith that God is going to open doors and close doors. Yes, yes. If that's not the one we're supposed to get, he'll close the door and open another one. You know, we can't be stressing. I know a burden seen this too, but I have seen so many people with anxiety and and stress and depression. You know, I'm sure the psychiatrist, psychiatrist and psychologist are making killings on are making, you know, these oh, appointments. Sometimes the, the anxiety and depression is so so strong, it's hard to, I can't even comprehend what they're going through. The anxiety, they can't breathe, they can hardly even function. Yeah. Now, I am not saying if you are taking medication for anything to stop it. I am not saying that. But I am saying that if you seek God's face, if you seek His will and pray about it, maybe you can get off that stuff. I know God's able to. God's able to wipe out that depression. God's able to get rid of that anxiety. God's able to get rid of diabetes and high blood pressure and everything. Why he didn't for some people, but he does for others, that's not for me to know. We had a evangelist one time come, you know, he had everybody up front, and he was praying for them, and he touched them, they all fall down. And somebody said, and I asked him one time, he goes, when you touch them on the head and they fall down, what happens if they don't? He goes, that's not my responsibility. I'm just here praying for them. God does the rest of it. Mm -hmm. We have to be there praying for the people. We have to hold them up in prayer, encouraging them, strengthen them in everything we can. Yes. I saw a thing where it said, a uh, 50-yard challenge. Uh -huh. You ever heard of that? Yep. You take one, take one person and find 50, 50 yards in your town, your community, of elderly people, people who are invalids, people who are unable to take care of the yards, you go mow their yard. You go take care of their hedges. You go do all that stuff. You do it for free. 50-yard challenge. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I'm sure if we look around, we'll find someone who's worse off than we are. Oh, yeah. We go help them take care of the things they have need of. Go take them a meal. Go bring them, you know, some cookies or pie. Pastor, I'm sure he'd turn you away. He probably wouldn't like that kind of stuff. <laughs> If you take past your salads and all kind of greens, oh, Jesus. well, maybe not. <laughs> but have the mind of Christ. What would Jesus do? That's an old saying, I understand. But what would he do? You know, if you see your, your neighbor that's hungry, feed him. If you see him without clothes, you know, it didn't cost that much to go to the thrift store and buy him some clothes. You go to Dollar General, go to Walmart, get him some clothes. You know, what they have need of, if God provides it to you, you can provide it to them. Yes, yes. That's good. There is nothing that we go through that God won't help us through. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you this in closing. I'm going to ask you one question. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. If you were put on trial for being a Christian, mm -hmm. would there be enough evidence to convict you? Mm -hmm. I've had to think about that a lot sometimes. You know, you go, I go through my life and every day you're doing things, but am I, do people really see Jesus in me? That's the thing I want people to see, is Jesus in me. Yeah, I know that sometimes my temper gets in the way, my mouth gets in the way. I have, I used to be a cussing champion like Pastor was. That's something I can honestly say, I don't cuss anymore. I used to be a drinking champion. 
I don't do that anymore. God delivered me from that stuff. But today, is there enough evidence to convict me, convict you of being a Christian? How many people do you know to say, now, I heard this thing on the internet. This cop pulled over this person and goes, why are you pulling me over? Well, you passed me and you had your finger out flipping this person off over here, yelling and cussing at him. And you were, you know, just speeding. And I pulled you over and now you're under arrest. They took him in and arrested him, fingerprinted him, put him in a holding cell. A while later, he came back and, okay, and let him out and, you know, let him out of the holding cell and said, okay, I apologize. But when I saw the bumper sticker on there, it says, Honk if you love Jesus. And I saw the follow me to Sunday school bumper sticker on the car. I saw the big old chrome fish on the back of your car. I thought maybe you stole the car. So, <laughs> our actions speak louder than our words sometimes. So, be careful what you say. Uh -huh. Be careful what you do. Yes. And put God first in everything. So, Amen. Pastor, I'm going to turn it back over to you. So, I appreciate the opportunity to, to bring what God gave me. It sounded so much better when I was asleep, when I was dreaming this. It sounded so much better. I get up here. I don't like speaking in front of a camera. It kind of makes me nervous. But, you know, God is great. Yes, he is. No matter what we go through, what trials, tribulations, heartaches we have, God is always there for us. Yes, he is. Amen. Praise God. God. Thank you, brother. It's time. Amen. Are we done? No. Oh. Praise God. Amen. Thank you. That was awesome. I received. Amen. That's what we all have to say. I received. That was for me, brother. Thank you. And you know what? Those of you that are watching, those of you that are listening, mm -hmm. if you never asked Jesus, now's the time. Mm -hmm. You know? Say, Lord, come to my, my life. Be my Lord and Savior. That's all you have to do. When you do that, you'll come and be your Lord and Savior. Amen. And start living for Him. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. You can be, you can do, the Bible says you can do all things through Christ all who strengthens things. you. Yes. We need His strength each and every yes. day. We fight a spiritual battle every day. Yes. You can't do it without Him. That's you it. need Him. That's your only way yeah. to win. Yeah. Amen. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Yeah. Nobody goes to the Father except through me. Through me. So <laughs> now's the day. Today's the day. All you have to do is say, Lord Jesus, I need you in my life. I've sinned against you. I repent. Come my life. Be my Lord and Savior. And you know what? Yeah. He will. Regardless of what people say. Okay. He will receive you now. Just like he received the crook, the, the, the robber at the cross. Mm -hmm. You know? <laughs> One of them was mocking him. The other one says, you know what? This is Jesus, Lord. Be my Lord and Savior. He says, today you'll be with me in paradise. That's the way Jose says it. <laughs> but he received them. He didn't say, well, you have to go through all these classes. You have to go and do this. You have to go do that. He says, no, today you'll be with me in prayer. All he did was receive Jesus as his Lord and Savior. That's what he was saying. And Jesus received him. So you watching, you listening, today be the day when you can say, Lord Jesus, be my Savior. He says, I'll be your Savior. Amen. Yes. So praise God. And you know what? Get you into a Bible-based church where you can study the Word. Amen. Get you a Bible. Start reading it. Amen. Get the Word in you so you can start getting it in you and speaking it out. Amen. Woo. And start going for Jesus. Let go and let God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. If you have sickness in your body, speak to it like I do. I say sickness. <laughs> There's no room for you in my body. I cast you out. I command you to go in Jesus' name. I speak healing over my body because by Jesus Christ, I am healed. Male functions, go. Mm -hmm. Everything functioning normal the way he created it to function in Jesus' yeah. name. Amen. Woo. Hallelujah. So I claim my healing in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. And it's time to give. <laughs> if you're giving, you can go to our website. It should be on the screen, NBCBigBen.com, and hit that donate button. Uh, if you're mailing it, 
NBC PO Box 252 Marfa, Texas 79843. And for Cash App, just go to New Beginnings Church of the Big Ben. God loves you and we love you. Amen. So yeah. God bless. Bye-bye.